Hey, a positive day on the markets. We have lots to talk about. It is June 21st. I am your host, The Cowboy. This is Elliot with Cafe and Charts of the Day. Let's get started. All right, so positive day in the markets. Um, you know, it's been a long weekend. Uh, we have a pretty, uh, uh, you know, bad week last week with a lot of sell-offs and the markets uh, have been recovering here. Um, you know, it, they kind of started back on, on Friday a little bit and, uh, you know, coming back here into Tuesday, the futures yesterday were pretty okay. And um, yeah, here we are, um, you know, trying to stage an advance of the lows is it the final low it's tough to say there's a lot of indicators that are telling us that that could be the case i've actually done a video on saturday it's called the macro cafe go ahead and check that out where i go a little bit more in details about what kind of what's going on in the markets and i cover uh, you know all the asset classes that we look at so um today we had a little bit of a rally here in the dow 2.15 percent s p 500 two uh, spot 45 nasdaq you know right there with the s p 500 um you know so not you know not a huge huge rally i think we've been higher at some point uh, and then we kind of pull back after lunch time uh but nothing really significant the vix dropped uh three percent uh which is which is good we're short vix uh, with the members and uh, we were looking for the volatility to start to contract a little bit after uh, um, you know a couple of weeks here of uh, of pretty intensive selling. Uh, if I'm looking at the bonds, um, you know today they've um, you know sold off a little bit in here. We had there some rallies in the yields, but nothing really really significant. Uh, there is a bigger story I think here that's uh, uh, maybe shaping up um, and. Um, you know, if the yields are starting to find some tops in here and the bonds to stabilize near these lows, um, they might start to hint here that um, the Federal Reserve might pause in their uh, uh, aggressive or they might have gotten too aggressive or they're looking to be way too aggressive than the, the market would like um, in their rate increases. And uh, if the bond market starts to sniff that out and uh, position the other way, uh, that would be a signal um, that the Fed will probably pause um, or maybe even cut depending on how bad uh, this recession will get um, you know if we're into something like that if the economic growth uh, uh, slows down so there's still a lot of questions that's why I think it's very important to keep an eye on the bond market um, you know from the five year all the way up to the 30s uh, and just see you know what the yields are doing and, and uh, how their um, how the so-called smart money are getting positioned so I'm keeping a close eye on this. I'm actually long the end of the treasury curve up there towards the 30s uh, via bonds. Um, you know, not doing too well so far. It's still kind of, um, you know, just flat lining, you know, without a lot of, uh, uh, not a lot of impulse of these levels, but I'm going to keep a close eye on that position. Then commodities in here have been uh, pretty much all over the place. Um, gold sold off. Gold is a, is, a, is, a, is a bad market. There's nothing going on in there. So it doesn't have my interest. I was just talking to the members this morning in the, in the, in the daily video uh, for the pro. And it's, um, you know, I, we covered everything else, but gold is just, you know, nothing really up there that, that, um, you know, wants me to open any positions at the moment. Uh, oil, um, you know, came down uh, last week. So we had the shorts, nice shorts in the oil market. We closed those off. I'm looking for some rallies and see if we can stay some kind of an advance. I'll show you some charts, uh, but that's been a pretty good trade. Uh, also, we were short on natural gas. That's been down about 2% today, um, you know, but I'm looking for a recovery in natural gas and then maybe short it again. And then the latest position, uh, it's on corn short, um, you know, which we've opened yesterday. So those are doing pretty well. Um, so just a mixed market in there. We uh, kind of were long um, the, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ and short VIX. So a little bit of a long risk uh, with some short commodity uh, mixture in there along with some uh, Bitcoin long. So take a look at the at the crypto land in here. Bitcoin um, has gone, I think, as high as about 21.5, 21.6, um, you know, but not a huge rally overall. I mean, it, it, anyway, in the futures market, you, you can't really tell much. Um, but on the cash market, 
actually a pretty decent advance right from 17.6 all the way up here so about four thousand dollar rally um in uh, in uh, in bitcoin but the you know the, the the crypto assets were pretty mixed today but trading with the you know let's say with the bullish tone energy was the the leader today so a lot of that stuff tried to came back um because they, they really took energy to the woodshed last week and that was um you know something i've been talking about for a while and uh i think um i think this rally it's a it's a rally that you want to shorten the energy that's kind of how i'm looking at it and and uh, maybe i'll reinitiate some some uh some long puts in the xle or or pick different instruments but that's kind of what i'm watching uh, consumer discretionary coming back a lot of um you know the kind of the high growth names were rallying today did pretty well i mean if you look at roblox and palantir and you know zoom and and uh you know arc etf stuff like that that was doing pretty well today china names so um you know those stocks that were the first of the pack uh during the sell-off you know apparently are the first one to kind of slowly try to recover not not you know it's still early but uh you know at least they stopped going down at the rate that they were going down so they're probably trying to base uh in there so uh really quickly here i'm just going to run you through our charts and i want to want to show you also a crypto chart and we're going to take a look at harmony one and the wave county harmony one one of my members posted a question about it and i wanted to kind of run uh, to you guys um with that and just kind of show you what i think about that i think that's a, just an important elliott wave uh, um, count and, and perspective and and um you know just kind of combine a little bit of the macro talk with uh, with the elliott wave and um you know this is the s p 500 so uh, you know nice gap up and 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 a bullish day um after a very strong sell-off you know decent volume coming from these lows in the market i mean this move is highly corrective still it's just uh, a bunch of overlaps again abc x abc and we can look for a recovery um in the market i, I i'm i'm targeting some kind of a, a wave from here followed by a b and then and then maybe followed by a c wave up the move into the slow was was uh, um uh, you know in line with uh, or 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 um you know it was followed or it moved in, in in sync kind of with a lot of extreme levels in sentiment so put call ratio uh, um you know stocks below their 50-day moving average i mean we've really this was a big flush a very very big capitulation flush in here i mean nothing that's been so far has been as as strong as as scary as this drop has been and, and it could have been just the end of it um so we'll look for the markets to recover obviously you're here below the, a lot of these moving averages so by no mean i mean this is going to be a very important low and you're pushing between your all-time highs you know this whole thing could be a big triangle still or who knows but it is um you know a shorter term i'm looking for a recovery and then i'll i'll continue to assign uh, um you know labels and probabilities as the market kind of moves uh, uh in, into our favor uh in here and i might show you the chart of the s p 500 here as we finish up uh in the wave counts uh nasdaq um you know pretty decent bounce as well uh you know sell off correction sell off um just a big three wave move so far in this markets as well so either complex or or just a simple abc but it is um you know holding this 11 to 50 level uh, look at this volume in here uh, uh, coming on the buy uh, the other day and that looks pretty good um nasdaq composite also uh, following uh, obviously what's in the nasdaq 100 dow jones in here i mean you know guys this is a corrective move um you know you have to have a series of ones and twos to 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 really flush lower and um you know it's nothing else than than one two three four five six seven seven waves are corrective waves um yeah so it's it's not a bad idea to to um you know to nibble in my view um in here and uh you know look for some upside potential we'll see uh, you know how sustained that is but again i, I kind of like the structure um russell you know i look at this correction a b c x a b c one two three four five six seven um if we can get back about 170 185 i think things will start to look better so uh the way this market will probably unfold if they if it does and 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 that's kind of the signs i would look for would be obviously you know probably something like that followed by a pullback you know you create some kind of a reversal uh, uh formation in here like that and then then you slowly start to climb back higher um so plenty of time plenty of time uh, this market has to prove uh, itself um you know for the upside or to the bulls um 
Bitcoin had a major flush, uh, obviously, over the weekend. On Saturday, we've had that drop to 1,700, 17,600. Uh, it could have been the end of this move, the end of the lag. We've done a video for the Bitcoin Pro Room. Um, you know, that's a different channel that I have where, where I just kind of uh, touched on Bitcoin and counts. And that's that's uh, uh, besides the Pro Room that I have. But, um, you know, we looked at this thing and there's a couple of interesting counts in here. I'm not going to, uh, you know, go into detail on them. But um, I like this rejection from these levels. Uh, this is a double failure here with a bullish engulfing. Um, it does look like we had a, a reaction to the upside. Um, and if this lows here hold, I think, you know, a buying against this, uh, against this, this positive sign in here could be a, a good idea. Um, we're still kind of looking to see if we're getting an impulsive move of these lows first. It, 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 it looks interesting, but it's not fully what I want to see just yet. But, uh, um, you know, it's something definitely to keep in mind after, a, after a, such a big flush. I mean, the fear and greed index in Bitcoin was, down to six or something like that, some crazy number. So, uh, and plus yeah, the sell-off created, you know, one of the largest capitulation in Bitcoin's history in terms of losses. Um, you know, I don't know, upwards of three billion dollars or whatever I saw on on Glassnode um, up there. I, I showed it to the guys in the room. So, uh, you know, combine that sentiment with with uh, some of these conditions that I see on the chart here. I think uh, you know there could be a decent bounce uh, starting to form in Bitcoin, but um, again, combine that with the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and, and the risk assets, um, you know, there, there might take a little bit of time. Uh, TLT, again, just trying to press longs on this one. Um, you know, you're kind of fighting the Fed a little bit here. They really kind of have to pivot before these bonds, I think, start to rally. Uh, but I'm maybe trying to front run them or trying to position myself ahead of that a little bit. So um, through the 30 or maybe the 20 as well, uh, I, there's still stuff that needs to happen here. I mean, there might be a divergence. I don't have the RSI here between this low and this low. Um, you know, we're seeing, you know, we're having a little bit lower volume, but nothing really uh, um, super encouraging just yet. And here is the yield on a 10 year, uh, you know, kind of came back. I don't think this is updated for the day because the yields went higher a little bit. So uh, the US dollar came back. So this is, we were talking about this being probably a final move higher. We, we sold off. And again, some big divergences between this high and this high. And, and, you know, if the dollar starts to, to pressure to the downside, we're going to get more, um, more risk assets. So far, still in a big uptrend. So I don't want to really, uh, um, you know, get, get too cute, uh, you know, with shorting US dollar. I was talking again, just in the, in the video this morning. Uh, this is, um, you know, it's something that uh, I need to see a little bit more from, from the dollar, from the euro long, stuff like that. And, and maybe a drop below the 50 day moving edge would be interesting. Uh, gold, there's really nothing here, um, that, that excites me. So I am not even gonna, gonna waste, waste time on it. Um, oil continuing to pressure the downside. I was talking for a while. This is probably a B wave. And, um, you know, we're looking for sell off. I think I've spent a little bit of time talking on the, on the macro as well. And I, and there's some counts there that talk about this. So, um, oil market, um, you know, a little bit of a rally today, but nothing, uh, nothing super, super strong. And then if i in here, uh, trying to form a base as well, and volatility index came back, we shorted this one and I'm looking to see if I can ride it all the way back towards 24 in the VIX. So uh, still a big, big resistance level so far with all this drama. And all these big sell-offs in the market and everything that you've seen so far in terms of fear uh, and VIX was not able to break above 36. You did not have that huge spike, huge capitulation into VIX. And, and uh, you know, I don't know, maybe maybe we're never going to get it. This is, you know, the, the, the best we're going to get. And, and um, you know, it's only so many times where you can continue to press these levels to the upside until, um, you know, you're coming back into a new volatility regime lower to the lower end of it. So... Uh, that's kind of what I'm seeing on the VIX. I'm going to kind of continue to press it, uh, to press it on the short, uh, really quickly, just on, uh, some commodities in here. I wanted to show you, um, the net gas. So we shorted this one, uh, um, you know, up into these levels. I mean, this was, this was a screaming short, uh, in terms of wave structures. I mean, look at this, just up, down, up at the lower rate, down at the lower rate, up at the lower rate, uh, a big divergence we've had in the RSI in here, and the markets just kind of crash lower. And if you can just spot it in here, you have a five-way decline, one, two, three, four, five. Um, so I would look to short natural gas against the three-way pullback. 
uh, that's the you know that's the story on natural gas and then I wanted to show you the corn set up as well I don't know how many of you guys trade the commodity markets um, you know via futures you can there's probably some ETFs as well uh, but corn for me it's also another uh, pretty decent short one two three four and five in here and um, you know I'm looking for this market to uh, to get much more aggressive here um, let me see if I can put you a little bit of a longer time frame chart uh, this is a monthly chart of corn uh, with a big resistance level in here with a big sell-off and um, I think we're probably going to have a little bit further to go so um, you know it's one of the positions that I kind of hold uh, shorted it via futures and um, you know we shorted it back here as an X wave um, you know, ABC X A probably BC maybe back towards the 20 day moving average so just uh, just looking at uh, at some markets we trade all the markets every single market that's out there um, you know that looks interesting and it's got um, you know, uh, potential and, and, um, you know, it shows interesting, uh, chart formations in there. Uh, you know, you gotta be over it and just, um, you know, uh, uh, try to pound it where you, where you see there is opportunity. Uh, all right. Let's, uh, take a look next. Um, well, just really briefly, I wanted to show you how deep this, uh, 50, uh, percentage of stocks below the 50 day moving average has gotten. I mean, this was, uh, a big one. What was this? This five two percent at some point, right on uh, June sixteen, June seventeen back there. Uh, this was at about two percent. Only about two percent of the stocks in the S and P five hundred were above their fifty day moving average. I mean, look at this sell off. Look at this big capitulation in here, almost at the levels from twenty twenty. So, you know, take this for what it is, but it's, uh, to me, it's definitely, uh, you know, very, very large move. You can still spend a bunch of time here. You know, you can, doesn't mean that you cannot sell off. You can sell off and spend a lot of time staying below, you know, below 5%, um, you know, on the 50 day moving average, but we'll see. I mean, I think shorter term here, it's still a pretty good indicator that the markets were, were, um, you know, heavily oversold. Uh, let's see, was there anything else in here that I wanted to, uh, take a look at? I mean, the advanced decline line, it's still, um, you know, I don't think it's updated for the day, but it's just, um, you know, in this kind of interesting bullish flag looking like, I mean, we're below the, the, the moving average here, which one is it? the 50, which is not a good sign, but, and, and, and you're, you know, you're kind of slowly trending lower, but you're not doing so at the same rate as the market does. So it's still pretty stable. You know, there's still a lot of stocks out there that are holding this up, um, you know, which is interesting to see. Uh, but I do want to see it kind of break that trend line, right? To right, get, get ultra bullish into, um, onto the market. All right. Let's jump over and take a look at the cryptocurrency. So this is uh, Harmony One. And it's a coin probably you're very familiar with if you're trading the cryptocurrencies and, 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 uh, these markets. Um, so what I want you to do, if you like Elliott Wave, and, and you probably already have this, um, you know, in your, in your setup, um, you know, try to count this move from this lows to this highs and then, uh, the move from this highs to this low. I can pause the video for a little bit on here and then see what you can come up with. It's something that we used to do, uh, you know, in some videos in the past and, and maybe we're going to do it again whenever we find some interesting setups. Um, but I want to see if, uh, you know, how you can count this and what you think about this move. Um, and then, um, you know, well, um, I'll show you, I'll show you what I think. All right. So, um, clearly you see a big impulse. So to me, uh, that's a third wave, right? And then if that's a third, um, uh, and, and you're already selling off right in hindsight here, that's a fifth and that's a one. So that's the simplest, Elliott wave setup you're ever going to find in a one, two, uh, you know, three, four, and five. Uh, you can do maybe one, two, three, four, and five, four, and five. So one, two, one, two, three, four, five, four, five, and be done. Um, I really don't want to, I really don't care, you know, for exactly the subdivisions if they, if they really, uh, you know, match 100% or not. Um, but what matters is that visually you can see that you can count one, two, three, four, five, which is a pretty easy thing to do. On this particular chart so the way i kind of counted this was like this you know one two three four and five this was um you know a pretty nice wxy and here i think we've talked with the members when we had this x wife happening uh, on the short side 
um, you know, then the market kind of stage in advance once they finish this correction. So this is how, how it looks when you have corrections. And you might want to take this, um, I'm going to come back to that. You might want to take this uh, when you're basically, uh, um, you know, even when you're looking right now at the S&P 500. And I mean, you can take the setup that's right here and you can extrapolate the setup to every other market. And uh, you can see how, uh, you know, a move can be very, uh, choppy overlapping and it's not impulsive but rather corrective in here now you know, truthfully you never know exactly how long that's going to be right but eventually the market will give you an impulse of the lows and then will give you a pullback and then instead of going lower it starts to push higher uh, and those are usually signs um, you know that tell you that the market could uh, you know begin the next leg up higher and usually one thing that i always watch is what happens you know here and look sure enough right there you had a lot of sell-off so usually on, on, on previous X waves, um, you're gonna, probably going to get resistance and, and uh, market trying to scare you and telling you that it's actually going lower. So, um, you know, don't be scared of WXYs. Uh, you know, they all finish. Um, and usually, uh, you know, it's a fourth wave or maybe a second. And that means that this highs where they started, that's going to get taken out. It's just a matter of time. And uh, so we've had a one, two, three, four, and five out of there. Um, so that looked pretty good. And then... Um, you know, from and, and another interesting thing in here, I mean, look, a third wave traveled 161.8 multiple of wave one, uh, pullback for a fourth wave in an ideal 38.2%. I mean, this is just a textbook move. Um, and then the sell off kind of started, right? You, 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 you failed to go higher. Um, you know, you had, you know, a double top in there. Uh, I mean, big divergence, uh, ever since those highs were formed, uh, into the RSI. So the market lost momentum. So it's exactly what I'm talking about. You know, when I talk about short corn or short oil or short natural gas or, you know, whatever other markets are, you know, you happen to look at, um, these are some of the, signs that you have that the market is kind of losing momentum obviously you got to have some type of a confirmation from price and and there's other things that we watch but um you know this was a, a pretty clean one and uh, the market sold off in a wave one then up in two and um then it looks like it did another one too all right and if that's um that's what it was and the reason why i'm, I'm looking at it that way it's because you're seeing this big decline in here and that's a big third wave decline. That's the biggest decline of this whole decline, right? And you can see that as a one, two, three, four, and five for a wave three. So this is kind of where the discussion begins. Um, if this is a one, two, one, two, uh, and this third wave, right? This degree of trend in here, and this minute degree is complete, that means that you still got to get a fourth and a fifth to complete the larger degree, right? This, uh, this minute degree to a wave five from a wave one minor. Uh, which means that once this is done, you're going to probably going to get a pretty decent rally up at least 50% in a B wave for so 38% to 50% to 61.8 um, retracement in this B wave. And this could be a very nice tradable move. And, and, and um, you know, then we're probably going to get another decline in a wave C. And the reason why I say that is because usually uh, if you start the correction with an impulse, that usually means you're going to have a zigzag or a double zigzag. So you're going to have an A, B, and then usually you're going to fall down in another C, and only then you go back up higher. So maybe this is what's going to happen in all the cryptos. You know, you're going to get a B wave rally, and everybody's going to get excited, and then we're going to get another big flush lower. I'm not saying that's exactly what's going to happen. Some of these patterns in some coins look a little bit better than others. Some of them look way corrective. For some reason, this one in one looks like it's um it's quite impulsive and if i go down to a six hour chart you can see the subdivision so let's say a wave one in here of these highs uh then you go in an a triangle b up in c for a wave two you drop down again in a wave one then you do this uh you know a b c up in a wave two then the sell-off begins in a one two sharp in three four extended fifth in third triangle in fourth one two three four five so um that's kind of how I'm, I'm, how I'm looking at this. This is, you know, a pretty clean triangle, I think. Uh, you know, you're having it kind of like that, right? You go up in, in, in A, down in B, uh, you know, up in C, D, and E, and then you drop in a one, two, three, another triangle here in a fourth wave, and then a quick drop in fifth, and you could be done, which means that this, um, you know, this fourth wave might take, you know, a little bit of time to unfold if I go to a one-day chart and I put this a little bit higher, 
right there might be I mean look at the size of the second in here and there's nothing really comparable um, yet for a fourth wave so it, we could we could squeeze a little bit higher you can go you know even like that maybe you can go all the way up there right which is quite quite of a big move but that's kind of what I would be watching um, based on this count in a one two one two scenario now, uh, what if this market is done? What if this market has found a low and, and it's ready to move higher? How would you kind of go about that? And, um, you know, as, as kind of impossible as that looks by the way that the structure is formed, um, I always want to have a count that suggests to show me if this move could possibly be completed. And, and, and uh, you know, one of the scenarios that I have in here, it's this one right here where this could be just an ABC. Now notice that you have a 1618 multiple, you know, for a C wave, which makes it, you know, quite interesting for a large third wave, because usually that's how deep they get in a third wave. You get 161.8 uh, multiple over wave one. So it's not a one, two, one, two, but rather, let's say a one, two, three, big four and five. So that's, that's another scenario that you can, um, you know, that you can obviously watch. And this would be let me go back to a two-day chart. This would look something like this. Um, you know, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Not up there, buddy. Um, five, something like that. Okay. So it's all that matters what happens from here, from these levels. How impulsive do you get and how much this market, um, you know, shows you aggressive. Um, and you take a look at moving average and some other stuff. And then, you know, you start to build... Um, you know, a, a narrative, you start to build confidence, you start to build a case regarding this. And regarding building a case, I just wrote a little piece for the pigeon and the statue. I'm going to put a link here. Uh, it's called The Detective. And um, that kind of tells you just a little bit about my thoughts on, um, you know, uh, what you kind of have to look for in the markets, you know, how you prepare yourself um, and, and look for evidence uh, in different things that you do and the markets you trade. Um, you know, to be able to to prove your case uh, to yourself and to the market that whatever you're taking, it's um, it's valid and it's solid and it can it can pay you in the end. Of course, you could be wrong, and and uh, you know, plenty of detectives are, and plenty of of prosecutors and 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 defense attorneys are wrong uh, in a lot of the stuff they do because you know uh, something you know escapes them or or or. or you know, they're not listening hard enough or they're not digging hard enough or who knows, right? But you could be wrong and you could lose it, right? And that's that's just the nature of life in general. So, um, you know, that's kind of one of the ways you will look at it. And the only thing that kind of catches my attention is this move back in here, which looks like it's a three-wave decline. Um, and the way you might be able to get around that is if you go, uh, let's say, on a six-hour chart for a wave A, um, you know, you might have to uh, look at this as a big fourth wave. Uh, this to be a wave one a wave two, a big wave three, a four and a five. Because if you look back in here, you don't really have, um, if you were to count this as a wave one, two, one, two, you don't really have a proper third and a proper fourth um, for that, you know, for that wave one decline. So it could be that it's only a third that kind of starts back in here, you know, like this. Right, so you have your one, two, three, a big four, and a five. It's it's awkward, um, you know, and it's um, it's not my favorite, and that's why I'm not putting it out there, uh, um, you know, for kind of the primary interpretation. Uh, but it is something that I'm keeping an eye on for uh, in case this move is done back in here, because you know, from from this highs to this lows, you can argue that you could have you know a pretty it's a strong completed move in here. So you can go in an A, B, and then you have a one, two, three, four, and five, and you could be done in here, right? And even inside this third wave, right, you can go, there's a one, a two in here, three, four, and five, and, and be done. So, um, you know, while it's not that appealing and not that encouraging, um, this would be one way to uh, think about this market. If it surprised you to the upside, like how come, you know, you can... Um, you know, how come you can rally from something that looks fairly impulsive to the downside? And it happens plenty of time. And, 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 and uh, 
um, you know, if you go back in history, you find you find tons of tons of situations where you just have a big massive flush and you're actually moving higher. Now, you know, some Elliott Wave police can come in here and tell me uh, uh, that, uh, hey, why don't you look at this as a flat in an A, B, and then down in C? And to that, I would say I think it's so awkward that I don't want to consider it. It's uh, it's very very it's a very very big decline here. Uh, um, you know, for a C wave. It would be, you know, extremely surprising if that would be the case. And I, I don't think I would ever count it like this. Um, you would probably have to, uh, um, you know, put a gun to my head and just say, yep, that's how you count it. And then I probably would. Um, or I would just kind of give up my life for Elliott Wave. But uh, um, <laughs> obviously kidding here. But um, all right, guys, um, I guess I, that's my attempt to try to be funny, which I'm not really. But uh, OK. Um, that's all I have for today. Don't forget to subscribe and like uh, if you want. If you don't, that's fine as well. Um, come and visit me in the pro room. Um, there is a link below this uh, video as well. Uh, give us a try and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.